Welcome to Two Chicks in a Horror Flick, a weekly horror movie review podcast. I'm Tawny Ray. And I'm Felicia Connor. Subscribe to get new episodes every Wednesday. We dive into trivia, drink a little whiskey, and of course, give our no BS opinions. Join our Discord server or message us on social media to talk all things scary. And if you like this show, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can find all these links on our website, twochicksinahorrorflick.com. Thanks for listening. Now let's get scared. Welcome, everybody, to the first um, in-person recording of Two Chicks and a Horror Flick. Here we are, in person. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> if you are watching this video, it may not be obvious to you, but we are sitting directly in front of each other. so. We can see each other. We're going to be talking live about this episode. Oh, look at me. I was so close to this. It's so weird. It's so different. I'm yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> we set it up in, in my living room yes. here in Arizona. And it's, it's, uh, we're going to hope it works. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So sorry if we have like this rapid eye movement. I'm so used to looking at the Zoom, but there's Tawny. Like, I, right I know. There, so <laughs> I'm like also looking over here to monitor and I'm like, no. I have to look no. I have to look at her face. <laughs> oh my gosh. Cuz usually it's one and the same. Yeah, We're exactly. Just all the same place. My monitor face. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um well, welcome. Here we are. And we are going to be talking about The Substance from 2024, brand new movie, still in theaters as of the time of this recording. Um because I uh, forced Felicia to go and see this mm-hmm. in the theater. So that's where we're at. Um and before we get into much else here, because we have lots to talk about, uh, Felicia, what are you drinking? And l- let's cheers. Uh, I mean, like, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do an air cheers because we're kind of too far, but. Cheers. cheers. <laughs> You're like, I really got into it. <laughs> some, <laughs> some inertia there, if that's the right word. Um, yes. So cheers, Tawny. Welcome to my home. We loved having you. We've been trying to convince you and Jade. It's so weird because I'm used to like talking there and the audience, but like, I, I don't need to tell you, I tried to convince you audience. We tried, we'll get this right. Um, <laughs> to convince Tawny and Jade to move in with us. Cause we loved having them so much, but I'm drinking Prosecco. This is Vera Wang party Prosecco. And I picked it up and I read the back and it was like, when I remember my sweetest life moments, I think of Prosecco being a part of them and she totally whisked me away. <laughs> and so I got it and it's, it's really good. So awesome. What are you drinking? Well, I have uh, some good old Buffalo Trace because we couldn't not drink and drink the drink of our choice. You can even see it back here behind me. Um, so that's amazing. I've been enjoying Buffalo Trace and um, Steve's famous, world famous. Uh, old fashions they've been really so good. good yeah that is our second bottle of buffalo trace as you can possibly see maybe not that it is over halfway empty so <laughs> <laughs> um we've been having a good time mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. what that means <laughs> okay so let's talk about what we've been doing together oh <laughs> my Gosh, what have you been doing with me? I have been hanging out with Tawny and Jade. Ugh, it has been absolutely awesome in every possible way. They are the most beautiful guests. You don't get them. So they're all mine. And I'm sure they have some family and stuff, too. No, I'm just kidding. But they are the most beautiful, wonderful guests. Um, you are the most beautiful, wonderful guests. It's so weird because you're in front of me. But anyways, I'm going to stop referencing how weird it is and how joyous it is. It's been so much fun. We've been eating. Uh, They got to experience Steve's love. We both love entertaining. Steve is just a really good cook. So we had a meal plan scheduled, like a whole menu ready to roll and just been relaxing and eating and drinking. Um, I feel like if I say everything, then you won't have anything to say. So maybe we just talk together about it. But I'll say the first thing. The first thing we watch together is um, Salem's Lot. Yeah. The new Salem's Lot. So that was really cool to watch. That was like our first. That was our first horror movie that we've watched together. Yeah. In person or together, period. It was so funny because Steve was like, 
like just waiting and waiting for us to watch a movie. And he was like, you guys, for people who watch horror movies, I just thought you'd be watching more stuff. And we were like, well, yeah, but we're also talkers. Yes. So um, most of the other time has been spent talking. <laughs> so we yeah, can't yeah. stop long enough to watch a movie, really. What were you about to say, though? I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, no, you didn't. I was. Yes, I told Steve I was like, we're more than just horror friends. <laughs> OK. <laughs> We are we are more than just the podcast. So, yeah, that was that was a blast. I was going to say when I stopped myself, but because I overthink and it's not necessary. But here I go, because I already just shared it with you. I We watched a movie together virtually before. Remember, yeah. we, we recorded, I think, with a guest and it was such a blast. We yeah. were so amped that we were chatting back and forth and we're like, let's watch a movie together. What was that? That was the remake of Goodnight Mommy. Oh, that's right. Because we had finished recording with Bev's Video Kingdom. That's what it was. Yes. Yeah. So it was exactly one year ago and we were so stoked. Uh, so we like virtually watched that together and like met, gave live updates basically to each other. And that was so you're right. That was actually probably the first movie that we watched together. But no, what you, we could do is. That was our first virtual movie we watched together. Right. This was our first in-person movie we watched together and first movie we watched together in the living room. And then The Substance was our first movie theater movie we watched together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, back on Salem's Lot, overall, I feel like we all kind of felt the same way about mm -hmm. it. It had some good ideas. It had some good stuff, fun stuff. But like, mm -hmm. it was it was just okay. It was just yeah. all right. It was okay. It had some weird stuff. We love that little boy, the yeah. main boy. I, I wasn't prepped, so I forgot everyone's names, but yeah. he was just such a little badass. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Some good stuff. And yeah. So then, God, yeah, then what we just ate, we've eaten so much, but it's been incredible. Like we like we were talking about it today and this is like just our kind of vacation. We we literally just flew to a different state. And then have just been hanging out at your house, like <laughs> just like we would hang out at our house and eat and watch stuff and just hang out and talk. And it's just like so fun. I feel like so like probably a lot of people are like, that's weird. You, you should go out and do things. And like, that's just not our vibe. I don't know. We don't no. we don't need to go do touristy Arizona things. We're just like, um, you want to. First of all, you don't want to go out and do touristy anything in 110 heat. So. Oh, true. Yeah, that's the other thing. It is scorching hot here for sure. But um, yeah, we were just like, uh, I'd rather eat, you know, jalapeno poppers. So that's perfect. I'm so glad because, yeah, Steve and I are very much homebodies. We enjoy relaxing. And, and Tani said a really interesting thing. She was like, is there something wrong with us? But no, you know, she explained her job and how hard she works and all the decisions she has to make it work, which, you know, totally relatable. And maybe that's the piece. Like there are some people that uh, have to keep go, 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 go. Like Steve's mom. Amazing. And she would even admit she has to be busy sitting. And like probably if when I said, oh, yeah, I just sat in a cabin in Colorado by myself the whole day, would <laughs> maybe drive her nuts. She likes to be busy. Um, but I think that's when I recharge the most and being able just to have conversations because you and Jade just you're so even if it's on different opinions, you have such like compassionate and loving and open and informational, informational <laughs> conversations. It's so fun. I like didn't want it to end today. We spent like the whole into the afternoon. We didn't even eat lunch or anything because we were just talking and it was awesome. Uh, and then food. Yeah, we just kept the food coming and the drinks. And so we just sat and ate at every moment and relaxed. I really enjoyed it, too. So I'm glad you guys did. Yeah, it's so fun. So, so fun. Like really our kind of speed. And, you know, we talked about that, too. Like the conversation It's just so great to have you guys. I feel like it's so weird that it's not weird, if that makes sense. Um, Like hanging out with you and Steve. I literally, I've never met Steve. This is the first time I met. I'm pointing over here because this is where his chair is. This is, this is Steve's lazy boy. He's not here. He's not here right now, but, um, but I have never met him in person. You know, we've only had, I've only had like a couple of very quick conversations with him online. And, uh, but I feel like I know him 
through you and through everything I hear. And I'm sure you feel the same way about Jade, right? Like oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's so like Jade and I were driving to the airport in Boise and I was like, thanks for doing this with me. Like, this is probably really weird by most people's standards. Like we are about to fly to hang out with people that you don't even, you like never had, like you've never had a conversation. I mean, he has had a conversation virtually with Steve, but like, you know what I mean? It's just like almost no contact, but somehow we just immediately came in and felt so comfortable and it's just so like easy and there's no like pretense or, you know what I mean? Like yeah. no discomfort at all. And what I think, I just think that's, it's weird actually that it's not weird. Yeah. You know, cause you would think it would be weird, but it's not. Maybe there's something supernatural or otherworldly. Like maybe if there are past lives, maybe we knew each other, we're connected, we're families, we're friends, we're whatever in a past life. It, I think this this past life idea makes this make a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> no, I agree. It is like, it's so weird too. Cause I feel like Steve and Jade are very much like similar mm -hmm. because we, I feel like we are very similar. And so we probably require similar partners in a way, you know, oh, like, yeah. it, cause I'm like the whole time we're here, I'm watching you guys interact and you interact similar to the way we do. Like we sort of like poke fun at each other and it's, it's a really like fun. We like laugh all the time at each other because we're like making jokes. And I was like watching you and Steve do that to each other. And it's just fun when you're able to relax and do that. And it's not a it's not like a passive aggressive thing. It really truly is like you're just having fun. And I just was like, yeah, that's like the same dynamic, you know, it's like so weird, but cool. Totally. I, I when I joke that way with someone, that means I'm very comfortable with them. Uh, if I don't, or I'm feeling aggressive towards them, I probably don't even make a joke or a comment, you know, it's yeah. just that, yeah, which I, I totally agree. And I see the same in, in both of you. And it was their first day they were here, right? They got here in the evening. And so that it was the next day. And I don't remember what I, I did. I had left for a moment. Maybe I went to the, we went to the store. That's right. You and I went to the store, didn't we? I just make all that shit up. I mean, that might have been day two, but I don't know what happened, but I got home. I got home and Jade was asleep on the sofa. So that's yeah. why I think it was like the first day because I made a comment of that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted them to feel so comfortable like this was their home and it's their his first day here and he's sleeping right there on the sofa. Yeah. Didn't feel like, oh, I need to stay awake. I need to make sure that I'm engaging with people. That was awesome. Yeah. No, it's been such a blast and um, I'm sad to leave. I know. I'm really sad for you to leave too. I know. I don't want you guys to go either. It felt too quick. I think we should have just stayed the week. I know we have to work. And <laughs> but you work virtually. Oh, no, Jade doesn't. Anyways, they're going home yeah. and it's very sad. And I want a fast follower. Like they can come back or we can go out there. We're already talking about it. Um, not like this year, of course, because the holidays and stuff, but we would really we would really like that. It'd be fun. I think yeah. you guys would like it. I wish you were just like a like a four hour drive away or something like that. So you could easily do it more often. Yeah. Unfortunately, we are too far to do any kind of driving, yeah. but the, the flight isn't bad. It's like an hour and 45 minutes or something. It's just the cost of the ticket. As long as the ticket comes down, but. Anyways, we're already daydreaming about next time. It was awesome having them. They also, um, we introduced me to some episodes of From. That's right. Because we were, um, what we had been watching that, obviously, we talked about it on our last episode. And uh, it was like last night, I think, we were kind of struggling for something to watch. And so Jade and I are like into it. Like, we want to know what's going on. And so we were like, are you okay if we just like hop in in the middle of the second season of the show? She's like, sure. <laughs> so we hopped in. We tried to explain everything as we went along, which I'm sure was slightly confusing. No, I thought you guys did a good job. I got a, a really good gist of what was happening and already have some characters that irritate the hell out of me and some that I'm interested in. I like, and I thought it was a fascinating, a fascinating show. So 
not sure if we watch more tonight, but I I signed up for that free trial. So maybe while Steve is gone this week on his on his trip, on his business trip, I'll watch some of those. Maybe I start at the beginning and get to know the characters a little bit more. Yeah, you could go back and rinse, restart, basically. Um, and then the last thing that we've watched so far um, was t- uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil, <laughs> because uh, Jade and Steve both really liked that movie. And so it came up. We were talking about stuff and we ended up watching that, which was really fun, too. They were so excited. Yes. They were just yeah. like, as soon as we were talking about movies in general and different things to watch. And I don't know. I think Tawny and I would have maybe watched something a little more horror, violent, like the violent nature we were thinking of. We were thinking of like other things. But when, when that movie came up, they're both like, oh, yeah. And Jade's like, yeah, I would love to watch it. We should watch that tonight. And Steve's like, yeah. And yeah. I mean, how could we say no? <laughs> and it was great the second time, too. Yes, it's oh, so good. It's, it's like so good. Yeah, we've already talked at length about that. It was definitely like one of the best horror comedies of yeah. all time, for sure. Um, but then the last thing I forgot about this, we watched a little bit of that just to have something on in the background. Kind of mm-hmm. we threw on some of that uh, horrors greatest, which is a new shutter show. And so they, you know, just roll through cl- clips of um, horror movies and kind of talk through them. So that was kind of cool because we saw some stuff about audition and other movies that we've seen or tried to watch and didn't. So that was a blast, too. Yes. We even watched one more thing. See, see, we did watch a lot of things. Yellow Jackets. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Yellow Jackets. Yeah. We watched the first two episodes of that, which was cool because I have been wanting to watch that for so long. Now it's on Netflix. So watched two episodes of that. And that was interesting. I'm excited to continue that at home, but it's not grabbing me as much as from like we're like invested right now in from. So I think we might finish that first and then go back to Yellow Jackets. Yeah, I feel the same way. I I am curious and we won't give anything away. Um, all I can say is there is, um, an aspect that I think is being portrayed that I'm questioning heavily. And so it's kind of road bumping me into really just grabbing onto this and watching it. But on the other hand, the acting is really good and it's fun. So do I give it more of a chance? That's kind of where I'm at. Maybe I'll pop on an episode and see if I like it, but it's like, I say this, my husband is so, you know, how much I love him and how fantastic he is. And he watches these horror movies with me so that I don't have to go by myself, but he doesn't really like horror, but he goes on and on about, he was going on and on about a lot of horror movies that he liked. So I think he's full of shit. But anyway, um, since he's going to be on a business trip, I want to maximize and just like binge horror in the movie in the evenings after work. And so it's just that time is precious because I still have the kids here, too. So it's not like a free for all. I have to be mindful of that. And they want to spend time with me and watch things with me. So what do I watch? What are the things I want to watch that I know Steve really does not want to watch? Yeah, you got to be judicious. Yes. Yeah. It's not like I took the whole week off. Man, I should have the whole week. Like, wake up. I could do some things sprinkled out, sprinkled in because uh, TT is on uh, fall break. So like I could color with her and we could do some stuff, but then we could break and she could watch her things. And then I could. Why am I daydreaming this? I'm working this week. So it, I didn't do this. I didn't do it. <laughs> OK, I'm, I'm reeling it back in. Be disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Okay, so what else? Um, that's really like, I think that's mainly what we've been doing. Yeah, they fell in love with Rizzo, my dog. Oh, Rizzo. She's so happy. And then, yeah, oh, they they took um, me and Titi to dinner this evening, and it was beautiful, this lunch, dinner, and it was wonderful. And yeah, the time went by fast, and it was wonderful, and I just really can't fucking wait for the next time. It's like literally whenever you guys want to come out, anytime, anytime, any holiday, any non-holiday, any time just come so if you see like whoa tickets are on sale boom book them <laughs> no matter what i've got the permission yes you got the permission boom book them awesome okay um anything else that we should talk about before we start talking about this movie you ready yeah i'm ready yeah like i it's like i don't because i don't want this to end but i need yes <laughs> because 
people have clicked on this episode because they want to want want to hear about the substance. So. <laughs> yeah, we owe it. We owe it to them. Um, so let's do it. And I'm so stoked for this conversation. So once again, we're talking about the substance from 2024. The director is you might have to help me with this with your French knowledge. Ooh. So this is a French uh, director. Her name is Coralie Far. Fargeo, maybe? Fargie? F-A-R-G-E-A-T. Something is just telling me that that T is silent. Yeah, I think maybe it would be Fargier. This is what I would do with it. <laughs> I'm going to, that sounds the best of all the things I just tried to say, so that's perfect. Fargier. Fargier. Um. So the only movie I recognized from anything she's done before, she did a movie called Revenge from 2017. I have not seen it, but I have been very curious. And now I am definitely going to go back and rewatch this because it is clearly a revenge movie, which I love. Um, so for cast, though, we've got Demi Moore plays Elizabeth Sparkle. Dennis Quaid plays Harvey. Margaret Qualley. I think that that's what I've been saying. OK, uh, plays Sue. And then Edward Hamilton Clark plays Fred. And that's all I grabbed. It's a pretty small cast. Mm -hmm. So um, for ratings, we have 7.9 out of 10 for IMDb, 91% on Rotten Tomatoes, and a four out of five on Letterboxd. Ooh. High scores. Yeah, yeah. Um, this one also I, I feel like is a misleading number potentially or isn't right or won't be right because this movie's still in the theater. Budget is 17.5 million. It looks like box office said on Wikipedia 17.4 million. So I'm hoping that it does a lot better than that. Yeah, maybe because it's so um, maybe because of the limited showing, like when we were going to come and see this, uh, when we were going to come and see this, Lord, um, when we decided to watch this in Arizona, it was only there was only one show time at, at only Harkins and one was at 950 at night at this Harkins. And then we found this other one we drove to was a 1250 showing. And then I think at like an eight something showing they had two. But then there was only yeah, at one other Harkins, it was like a 930 at night. So maybe if people are wanting to watch a movie and they look, they're like, oh, there's not yeah. that many options. Yeah. And. Uh, that was the same thing when so Jay and I saw this first. I, I, th I mentioned that on our last episode, but if you haven't listened to that, um, we went and saw it on a Friday night. I just started hearing some buzz about it and I, I got excited. And so I was like, let's go see this movie like last minute decision. Didn't look anything up like let's go see it. And I looked at Friday, Saturday, Sunday and every one of those days it was like only one showing was a, a day at the theater by our house. And it was like nine thirty. 9.20, 9.30, and then 8.50 or something. Like, it was all 9 o'clock. This movie is two and a half hours long. So it was like, we just have to choose one, and it's not going to be Sunday night. Hi, Rizzo. Hello. Or Betty. Oh, She's hey. here. She's here. Um, so, yeah, I think that's part, that might be part of it, too, is, like, I'm hoping now that they're going to continue to extend the theater uh, run and open up more showtimes, the more buzz this gets is my... Ugh. So, if you're on, look, that's you. That's you. If, I love how she won't look at anything. Just kind of like off, like, what is this woman doing? So, go to YouTube. I'll take a picture. <laughs> you look so cute. Yeah, go to YouTube. And this is Rizzo. Rizzo, look, that's you. She's a very. This is pretty much her all the time she just wants to be loved and she's quiet and she she's kind of side glancing me like why are you humiliating me mother that's the vibe i'm getting like what are this bitch maybe i think her i think her look just changed to like when you're sleeping. <laughs> okay Ooh, she's the best <laughs> she's our she's our new best friend and our favorite <laughs> oh thank you for indulging us Mm. Oh, OK, let's roll into our summary. I did do a summary for this one because I feel like this is a movie that. 
probably isn't for everyone. <laughs> I like I said on our last episode, I think listeners of this podcast would enjoy this movie. But I think people who don't watch a lot of horror, this is a pretty out there, pretty gory, pretty gross movie. So I'm going to do a summary because I think this is this could be an episode that people might want to listen to without having seen the movie. Yes, that's true. Yeah, it's weird. So you have to like weird and it's disgusting. (laughs) So, yeah, that's a great idea. So um, turn back now. If you do not want this spoiled for you, if you do, in fact, want to go watch the movie, because from here on out, we are just going to spoil the shit out of this movie. And I will say what I said before. This movie is best seen if you decide you want to see it. It's best seen totally blind. Like, don't look up anything. Don't watch the trailer. Just go and watch it and have the experience for the experience sake. And I also recommend seeing it in theaters if you can if if the theater run uh, extends and continues on because it's just such a good experience theater wise yeah it was and we'll get into that more but um here we go okay so i'm going to totally ruin and spoil the shit out of this movie thank you chat gpt for helping me do a shorter version of this <laughs> Elizabeth Sparkle, a 50-year-old actress, is fired from her aerobics show on her birthday for being too old. After a car crash, she discovers The Substance, a serum that creates a younger version of herself named Sue. Sue quickly takes over Elizabeth's life and fame while Elizabeth spirals into despair. The two are supposed to switch every seven days to maintain the balance. Sue begins to steal more time, which causes Elizabeth to age rapidly. When Sue's stabilizer supply runs out before a big New Year's Eve show, she must switch back, revealing a grotesquely aged Elizabeth. In a violent confrontation, Sue kills Elizabeth, but without her, Sue's body deteriorates. A failed attempt to create a new version results in a monstrous hybrid, Monstro... I'm going to mess this up the whole way through. Eliza Sue, which causes chaos during the live New Year's Eve broadcast. The audience is disgusted by Eliza Sue and begins to attack her and begin to attack her. One of the audience members decapitates her using causing her to spray blood over everything before racing out of the studio and down the street where she falls apart to a bloody mess. Ultimately, Elizabeth's original face emerges, crawls to her Hollywood star and melts away before the aftermath is cleaned up the next day. Excellent. Okay. So there we are. And welcome your seatbelts. Buckle, buckle them up. <laughs> Strap yourself in for this ride. Uh, and Felicia, tell us, what did you think about the movie? I fucking loved this movie. I loved it. I loved it. And it, it was so fun seeing it with Tawny because it was just an experience. Like there would be a period or a moment in the movie that I was experiencing like crushing sadness and disgust and sh- disgust and she'd be giggling <laughs> like right by me <laughs> you know it was such an interesting feeling or i would be like Sh- i'm very emotive and i don't care where i am i'm what you know and i'm like oh with my jaw and i could see her look at me and i could see her enjoying that shock you know it was such a cool experience um and when we left i was like planning on taking tawny to lunch before we went home Uh, but I think I explained it like, you know, I could go either way, but like right now I'm, I'm hungry, but also, um, I don't remember actually, actually exactly what I said, but something like my stomach is kind of filled with disgust at the same time. So I don't really know what to do with myself. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I was like, well, I ate a lot of popcorn. So I feel like kind of tied over and you're like, you're like, yeah, I have in my stomach popcorn, soda, and just... Oh, that's right. <laughs> and it truly did make me physically ill. And, or like, I didn't go and throw up in the bathroom, but I I did feel too ill to eat after. Um, And then we get home and my husband, it was making steaks that night. And he had the steaks defrosting on the in, on the counter. And I looked at it and went, oh. But by the time the steaks came, I was fine. But when I first got home, I was like, (laughs) so gross. I never want to see meat again in my life. And I also felt 
when I left, like being quiet, like it, I felt like it needed to simmer inside of me. And like, I didn't want to say too much too soon. Yeah. Yeah. I loved it though. I loved it. I loved the experience and wow. And by the way, we're together. So it was a lot harder not to say anything on a 50 minute ride home, (laughs) you know, just sitting there quietly because we don't want to share what we think. So we had some really, really great and vulnerable conversations about body image and about like all the things we're going to talk about in this movie. And, and yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. But I do like that. We, we did talk about it a little bit, but we didn't get into super detail. So we will do that here as we talk through this, but, um, yeah, I'm so glad. I mean, obviously you can hate a movie that I love, but I felt like this was just such a, such a unique visceral experience of a movie. That's why I was just so intent on like, we got to go see this together because I want to watch you watch this movie, you know? And again, you didn't have to like it, but I love that you loved it because it was so, it was just so weird. It's such a weird movie. Um, but you promise, I don't want you to like, feel like you have to like it because I liked it. So who me? No, 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 no. I would tell you (laughs) who me, (laughs) are you talking to me? I don't know why I said who me, but it was a natural response. <laughs> Are you talking about me right now? Um, I, I think why I said that was I was I what I meant was, are you like talk? Are you saying this to me right now? Or were you thinking you don't have to like it? That's what I meant to me. Um, so no, 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 no. I loved this movie. I liked it even more after our conversation a little bit because the end, like I loved all of it, loved it. The ending, I was like, whoa, what? And so when we talked about a little more, which you'll bring that stuff up, um, I was like, oh shit. Okay. That makes sense. And so that kind of like tied that particular loose end together for me. Um, and I really enjoyed that. I loved the experience. I loved the acting. I loved the visuals. Um, I loved the message. And I mean, it truly got me thinking, and Tony and I talked about this, about myself and my own experiences with my body, my looks growing older over the years. We'll talk about all, all of this, not necessarily my body and everything, but like <laughs> these ideas. And I thought, wow. For a movie to like, because I actually felt emotional about all of those different things and the way, you know, I would think about myself throughout the years. It just brought out a lot. That's why when we got home, my um, older daughter and her girlfriend were here and they're like, oh, did you like it? I'm like, you should see it because I was coming hot off of our conversation about body image. And I wanted I wanted the girls to think about that before they're my age and they look back and go, Oh, look at all of the years. I didn't enjoy who I was exactly at that moment. And then you're like, well, wait. (laughs) And I was like, Oh shit. Yeah. It's real disgusting. (laughs) She goes like, I can't do, um, gory. And I was like, Oh yeah, this is not like, we, we like walked it back. We were like, Oh yeah, never mind. It was great movie, but very gory. Yeah. So this is honestly from my heart. Um, I thoroughly, I enjoyed the whole experience of the movie. I enjoyed every moment of it, even the disgusting parts. I was totally enthralled. Yeah. It's like such a unique experience. And um, I'm so glad I was like self-conscious when I made Jade watch it too. Like the first thing I said to him, I think is I turned to him and I was like, I'm sorry I did that to you because he doesn't like body horror. And this is like one of the most body horror movies I have ever seen. Yeah. And I, he was like, it's okay. I'm actually, he like he loved it. Like we we walked out of the theater. So obviously I fucking love this movie. <laughs> Duh. But we walked out of the theater and both of us were like giddy. Like we were like, whoa, what the fuck was that? Like that was so crazy. That was like such a experience. And we were just like giggling and laughing. And he, it's like it's like a dark ending. It's really not even that funny, but we'll we we talked about this um, for a second when we were taking a quick break, but I think we're going to try to take this movie uh, 
kind of linearly. We're going to try to go chunk by chunk so we can hold and talk about the ending at the very end. But man, did that have an impact. And I agree. I love the act. Like there's everything. Jade goes, Jade goes, I feel like I just like watched a piece of art. Yes. Like, it was so, I got chills. Yeah, me Even too. Like, can we sing it? <laughs> me too. Um, it was so, it's not a subtle movie, right? Like it's, it is in no way a subtle movie, but the messages, I just, oh, it just came across so well. I, I feel like this director did such an amazing job of portraying so many different things. It's like a layered movie, but oh, it's just beautiful. And I love it so much. And I just think anybody who loves horror should see it in the theater. But it is a very, uh, very weird movie. But I fucking loved it. Oh, so, so great and weird. I think this is exactly up my alley. Me too. And you know what else I was thinking? I was like, I think if you if I had watched this like 10 years ago, I don't think I would have the same reaction. I think I would be like, this is too weird for me, you know? But I, I wonder if just the amount of horror that you consume, if you get to a point where sort of these more bizarre movies become like more digestible almost because you've watched so much that you're like, um, you, I don't know, you're like pre- prepped or poised for it or something. But yeah, that's a really good point. I was trying to think back of when, because my my love and appreciation for horror and the different ways the horror is presented in the different movies has definitely developed and changed over time. And so I was trying to think of what would be not equal, but what was towards the beginning of us recording? Because when we started recording, my knowledge of horror was very basic because when we, you and I started talking, I even said, oh, I don't know that I like horror, but I like this. And you're like, that's horror, (laughs) you know, because I just I had the vision of horror equal slashers. And I so it's definitely developed and changed over time. And I was just kind of thinking back of what was like the weirdest movie we watched way back when. But I don't even. I don't even know, because I was trying to envision of how I would have reacted to this particular movie. What like and in typical, I appreciate you brain, but to very typical my brain fashion, it's like as soon as I want to recall something, it's like there was nothing. There's nothing in your past. <laughs> this is a blank slate. You've never watched a movie before. <laughs> what are movies? Yeah, what are movies? <laughs> exactly. But I want to look back and see I, that was because I'm curious of how I would have responded. Yeah. I The only one I can think of early on is maybe Jacob's Ladder. Um, but see, I watched that when it came out and I did love that. And it terrified me. And when the ending hit, I was like, you fucked me over and I loved it. So, <laughs> All right. So where it starts. Yeah. Um, I we made it there just in time. Literally, we saw the first shot. It's the shot of the egg getting injected with the substance and then it developing a second yolk. Then it's followed by a shot of a Hollywood star being built um, for Elizabeth Sparkle. And it's. And it's just a top down shot of that for a very long time. And you see people pass by. Seasons change. Time goes on. People seem to forget her. They were taking pictures in front of the star, but then they are not. Uh, And I felt like this was such a beautiful way to show, don't tell. Like we had like no exposition at all. It just lays the story out for you, like very black and white. This is what this thing does. This is who we're talking about. I liked that a lot. It, that was beautiful. And that's excellently put show, don't tell for sure. You see this brand new star. You see people taking pictures, people loving it. Oh my gosh, Elizabeth Sparkle. Love, love, love. And then it's people mentioning it. Oh, isn't that the lady from that show? Or isn't that the lady from, and then people just walking over it, not noticing it at all to the very end where someone just drops this disgusting it cracks you see the snow you see all the different seasons and then or as the years passed and then at the 
end of this particular sequence, some guy drops this gigantic burger and just slops everything all over it. He picks up his burger and he rubs with his shoe, rubs that stuff into the star and walks away. And that is pretty much what happened to her in a, in a sequence. <laughs> and it's so sad. Like, I don't know we didn't talk about this, but it, it makes me think of us as consumers of movies and stars, how we treat them. You know, like, I mean, we're going to have our stages. That's not, you know, we're going to have, oh, I'm really into this person for all this work they're doing. And then someone else is going to come in. It is what it is. But maybe we can have a little bit more compassion uh, to to these stars and kind of like what they're going through and, and what it's like. And we're going to get more into that with like, I I don't know what changes need to be made to make women feel like they are still valuable and wanted as they grow older. Yeah. Because I don't know. And I don't, I've never seen anything from a man's point of view. So I was trying to remember what is the next scene? I feel like there's so many things happening and they all blend together for me. But I do think maybe we're introduced to Debbie more and she's, exercising yeah she's doing the exercise video that's the next the the next scene for sure is this something that you remember because i remember growing up in that era these outfits and these exercise the stair uh thing where people are up down up down and these exercise videos and it's portrayed in so many movies just recently we watched the professional fucking phenomenal movie like leon the professional yeah yes yes And um, with little baby Natalie Portman. Yes. And in that, the mom is watching this exact type of video and doing the exercise. That's just what I remember from it. Um, Do you like do you remember this? Was this kind of like when you were growing up? Was it the same kind of vibe or Um, I think I was uh, I think it was a little before. Like I remember Tybo. Like Tybo was yes. my, <laughs> which yes. is, it's a little bit of a different flavor of yes. that. It's not quite the like Jane Fonda aerobics level. It's like the martial arts, like, you know, punching and kicking version of it. But yeah, like, I feel like it, uh, it lives so well in the zeitgeist that like, I, I've been exposed to it enough that I, you know what I mean? Through, through other movies and nods to it. Yeah. And I was trying to think. At first I was like, oh, this was totally more 80s, 90s, where these workout people were stars. But I I actually think I'm wrong because I know Jelaine Michaels is someone for like from The Biggest Loser and she has her whole fitness app. So maybe I, I don't know if it's actually I stick with my original. I don't think they're as famous. And possibly that's because you have to download apps, you have to you know, engage and pay where before it was just on TV all the time. You could just ask, you could access it from TV and it was something that you watched and you scheduled to watch. And a lot of people, if they were flipping through the channels, it would come up. But now if I want to do a Jelaine Michaels workout, she has an app. So I need to know about it to go to the app and download it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And so I do think it's as big, right? Maybe even bigger because you have so many Mm -hmm people trying to do it on their own and can do it on their own because of, you know, the rise of social media. Yeah, that's true. But it definitely, yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, something about this, I read something about the, and I can't remember if I took a note on this, but I don't think I did. It was about her, uh, flat and how, like her apartment and how it feels both vintage and futuristic at the same time so that it can be universally applied and a very like um sort of agnostic like it could be at any point in time and i wonder if that's not why they chose aerobics as this too right because like it's it's still around it's just around in a little bit of a different the format fitness obsession right it will yeah like oh my god is that ever gonna go away no because people are always going to be because of the message of this movie <laughs> yes. obsessed with body image. Right. Yeah. And beauty standards. 
And so now it just looks a little different. It may not be a televised, you know, uh, morning show program of aerobics. It it's might be, you know, a YouTube channel by somebody, but it's it stands yeah. and it's still just as relevant. And the next next right after that that we see is she's feeling great. She looks like she's feeling great. This is sad. Not that she's feeling great. She should. <laughs> but she goes to the bathroom. She goes to the men's restroom because the women's restroom is out of order. No one's in there. She's got to go. So she goes in there and then her. This is like the producer, the head honcho guy. Right. I love this filming. So he comes into the man's restroom while she's in one of the stalls and he's peeing in one of the urinal urinals. And the camera is like right in the wall in front of the urinal. So he's like talking to someone on the phone and you can just see his face so up close inside. Oh, my gosh. This was they did. The whole movie was this up close in your just in the nitty gritty, like uncomfortably close. In exactly. It. You're up in there and you can even like I think part of the reason why I love this theater experience, too, is like the sound design, you know, like we're getting the sound design of him like peeing in the urinal and we can hear him like shaking it, like shaking out his urine. Oh, it's yeah. so gross. You're like, oh, I'm like, it's such a visceral. I'm too close to this kind of experience. And he's just being a fucking asshole talking about how old she is and she needs to be replaced. And I don't care what we owe her and blah, blah, blah. She's just like in the stall listening to this. He's just disgusting and leaves the stall. Um, I'm curious to know if you picked up on I feel like these two scenes back to back or these two locations, the hallway and the bathroom, I immediately was like, oh, this is The Shining. Yes. OK, that's immediately what I thought, especially the hallway. Totally. 100 percent The Shining. That's the, the vibe I got from it. Yeah, it definitely, definitely is like such a such a very close you know, but I like how it's a little bit different. It's not exact, but it's close enough. Oh, yeah. And in the bathroom, I was like, you know, I mean, I don't watch The Shining all the time. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I knew I picked up on right away. This is that bathroom that he's in in The Shining, right? The, with the white and orange. Yes. OK, so the bathroom, that's a really great point. I remember that now. The hallway, 100 percent, like smack in the face. But you're right. Ooh, was there something about that, like that they made that decision for a certain reason or no, nothing? I don't think so. I think that um, not necessarily like very specific, but there are so many nods to horror movies in this movie that I, I made a huge list of ones that like I just picked up on. And I'm sure that I didn't even pick up on all of them. You know what I mean? I'm sure I got like one tenth of the references that are in this movie, but it felt like um, I saw this. God, I, I'm sorry. I should have gone back and found this person's comment, but somebody on Reddit was like, somebody on Reddit said something like, uh, it feels like these nods and Easter eggs from this director are not necessarily like fan service. It's just in their DNA. Like you can, it's like that they have, absorbed so much horror content that it is like part of them and that just came through in the filmmaking aspect of it not not so overt i mean it's overt the some of the um nods but like it's like in their psyche yeah it's just like a part of them it's not even like that they were like trying so hard to do a thing yeah that does make sense to me yeah Okay, so then let me tell you that about the other Shining reference because I felt like it was also one that I picked up on. It's her at the bar. Still in the beginning stages of this movie. Um, but she goes to the bar and she's wearing that open back dress. And it's it's like the Shining bar. Did you notice this? Oh, shoot. I didn't notice this. Even the bartender is wearing like the same like vest. Shining. I mean, I was staring at her back in that beautiful dress. I'm thinking, shit, I wish I had that dress. <laughs> but I didn't notice that. Okay, so we can kind of go as we go. But um, what? just one other thing that I'll mention here in the beginning of the movie uh, as another horror movie reference. So right after this this scene, we also see her meeting with Harvey. Yes. Oh, God, yes. Clearly a Harvey Weinstein reference also. 
Um, but he's eating the shrimp and it is just fucking disgusting. It is like next level gross and ugh. It's so gross. He is telling this beautiful woman who has just turned 50, right? People are telling her happy birthday during, right? And she's beautiful. And he is disgusting. Yeah, it's Demi Moore, by the way. We didn't mention that. This character is Demi Moore, if you haven't seen the movie. She's absolutely stunning. And he is telling her how, yeah, it just all ends at 50. Like, there's just, and she's like, what does? And he, and he he's like, hey, you know, uh, and then he meets, he goes, oh, I see someone else I need to go talk to. But these shrimp heads and the shit coming out of his mouth and is like, it's so disgusting. and. I I told Tawny, you know, it's crazy because there are these this man in this movie dictating on what beautiful is in a woman. He is absolutely disgusting. He's not trying to be anything but who he is. I don't even know what to say, but like he's there's one scene and we'll get to it where I'm not going to go into the scene, but he's smoking and you can see the yellow of his teeth like. He is not doing anything to take care of himself, but he is passing judgment on this woman who is a beautiful woman, but you know you're 50. And yes, I hear you. I hear some of you that are like, that's the industry, though. For women, when you're a certain age, you're just not going to get the audience. And he knows this. And so he is trying, you know, he knows that he needs to pivot to a younger woman to make the money he was making. Yeah, I I hear you, but no, but yeah, I mean, it makes you part of the system. You know what I mean? Like, as long as you're not like doing anything about that, you are sort of complicit in that. And, you know, this movie is such a uh, we said earlier, it's not a subtle movie. It's obviously taking things to the extreme and making people caricatures of themselves. And so he's obviously a caricature of this, but he's like a terrible person. Like, he's just very two faced, very. Yes. Yeah, totally. Very rude. Not considerate at all. Um, But in this scene, you see a fly fly into his wine and die. He gets up from the table and walks away and she continues just to watch it and it just stops moving. And I I feel like this had to have been a the fly reference because it's such a famous body horror movie. Um, at first I thought maybe it was showing that she had poisoned him. <laughs> I was like, oh, did she poison that wine? And he just didn't drink it. But no, I don't think that's where we were going. No, I thought that in that moment she was, she was the fly. She was, okay, yeah, like she was, it's over. It's over. You're done, you're dead. And that wine is like. This world, this wealth, this fame, this what she's experiencing in this moment. And yeah, I mean, fucking both definitely could be both. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So good. That was a shit ton of shrimp you fucking mowed through. That was disgusting. I told Felicia before we like went to the movie, I was like, we do not. I was like the day before I was like, we do not want to be supremely hungover for this movie. Just so you know, just so you know. We don't want to go into this movie hungover because the first time we watched it, I think we had like just eaten or something. And I was like feeling a little queasy, you know, like when yeah. he's eating that shrimp. Oh, I think it's one of the more disgusting parts of this movie. I was like, this is so gross. It made me actually a little nauseous. Tawny and Jade reminded me over and over and over again. You don't want to feel sick going into this movie because I was drinking Prosecco and feeling pretty good. And I was like, oh, should I have an old fashioned? I'm like, "Mm, I don't want to I don't want to disrupt the balance. Right. I don't want to pivot to a different drink and end up not feeling well. And one of them would go. Yeah, because if you're seeing the substance, you definitely don't want to be hungover. You don't want to feel sick. You don't want to eat too much before you go see the substance. Yeah. And we're probably overhyping it at this point, but 100 percent. It was disgusting. Yeah. It's so gross. Some at some points. Right. I know that there is the point and I don't know if this is exactly next. She's driving home and she's in the car accident because that's when she gets to the doctor's office. But it was there something I mean, obviously, we're introduced to. Oh, it's just heartbreaking. 
she's just feeling so great. And now she is questioning her beauty and being in that business where it is all wrapped up in your looks. If you don't have your looks, do you have value? And she's questioning all of that. And she doesn't feel like she has value. But this is what is starting to happen. But I don't remember what was she focusing on when she got in the car accident. There was something else that she. They were tearing down her uh, billboard. They had a billboard of her and they were like tearing down her face. And so she was like distracted by that and got T-boned. Her car rolled about 100 times. The Also. Yeah, something about this movie, it's so, uh, I feel assaulted by this movie. It's so loud and, like, oppressive in a way. Oppressive maybe isn't the best word, but it's, it's like, so intense. It's so loud, and it, like, it, like, hurts. Like, it is coming at you in some parts of the movie. It's almost too much. It's relentless. Yes, yes relentless. Thank you. That's a great word. The car scene is one like this because like it does not end. I mean, it's just loud and she keeps rolling and rolling and you like want it to be over. But it's so long. It feels like you're in it. Yeah, because you are. I mean, yeah, we're yeah, like well, you are in it. Yeah, with her. Yeah, we're, it, we're a POV in the car, like rolling with her. It's so uh, violent and scary. Yeah. So then she goes to the doctor and they uh, do some exams. She's a, she's OK. But one of the techs has a birthmark on his arm and gives her a little slips her a little note. And it says it changed my life. And she has a USB called the substance. Yes. So she's walking out of the hospital. She discovers this like um, the substance USB thing. Is that what they're called? (laughs) External drive. (laughs) And um, then this man walks up to her. Right older man probably her age right this man oh my gosh lizzie lizzie remember me from like what was it 10th grade homeroom some 10th grade homeroom and she's like oh yeah no like very clearly she does not remember but she's like yeah and he is just like oh my gosh you're such a big star and look at you you're still so gorgeous you are the most beautiful woman i have ever seen and it's like this oh no no actually rewind for myself i'm fast forwarding <laughs> rewind because i'm fast forwarding and i'm drinking a prosecco um she wasn't feeling that first she's like oh okay you know but she's being nice she's being kind and he writes his number oh yeah we should get together he writes his number on a piece of paper and it falls in the mud and i totally i said it out loud i think like no rewrite the number he picks this floppy muddy thing and hands it to her just rewrite it on the other piece of paper you have i think you said i think you were all no (laughs) okay so i was thinking gross rewrite it on a new piece of paper and it came out in the movie theater no (laughs) you said it twice you even go no no rewrite it (laughs) that's just just, (laughs) see how fun watching a movie together this is so fun so fun. I was surprised. I told I told you this when we left, but I was like, OK, the, our theater experience, right? Like we we had no one in the theater when Jade and I saw it first. We had like three other people in the theater. And so it was like very empty, very quiet. Um, and people were like kind of having a good time. And then Angelo, um, like mentioned in our discord, our, our buddy and podcast listener, like you should go see this in a packed theater. So when we went it was pretty busy. It was a small theater, but there were a lot of seats filled. And I was like stoked to be in there with a lot of people. And I was so excited for their reactions. And it was so quiet. I was like, I was like disappointed that you were the only one like making react. You were the only one doing reactions. I was like, I come on, everybody just do it. The girl next to me did like laugh a few times, but I was like ready for everyone to do stuff. And then you were like, Oh, it's probably because they were in shock. These poor Arizonians. They were probably just like, huh? (laughs) Shocked. I did see at the closing credits, the girl to the right front of me. um, She it was so cute. I think she was with someone. Maybe she had seen it before and wanted them to see it because she very giddily went. (laughs) <laughs> like she clapped at the end and I could 
she wanted to clap right but everyone else was so quiet so she was probably feeling what we were feeling so instead she just went <laughs> like to herself yes. yeah jay and i were like whoa that was fucking crazy like you like it was quiet in our theater too for the ending like everybody was just was like i guess we uh i guess we leave now <laughs> let us let us leave now yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, but this guy and his over the top, uh, something that we talked about is like throughout this movie, you get really the lens of you're you're getting the filtered lens of Elizabeth. Like you're what's happening is not it's so over the top and it's so uh, like fantasy land. It, it's like not even what would really happen, but how she receives that information. It's not what they're saying. It's what she's hearing. I loved it when you said this when we were driving home i absolutely loved it because i don't know that i picked up on that i i thought because this movie was so in your face that it was just part of it but you're absolutely right it made it totally made me appreciate it more because i know we all know what that feels like so when this guy, oh, you're the most beautiful, he might have just said, oh, you're looking great. And what she's hearing is you're the most beautiful. You have value. Yeah. You are the most beautiful woman in the world. You're still beautiful. This is what she's getting from him. And we all do that. I'll speak for myself. I know I do that for the good and the bad. If someone doesn't give me the, the reaction, like say at work that I was expecting, I feel like, ooh, maybe I'm hearing. They don't like it. They don't think my work is valuable. Oh, no. You know, like that spiral. Or if you're feeling down and someone says something kind, you're like, oh, I'm a good person. I've impacted their day. I've done good. You're hearing all of these different things. And I love that. I loved thinking of that movie through that lens. Yeah. And it helps because I think it does feel sort of I mean, it's like a very surreal type of movie. But you have to know that like we are it's sort of this, you know, skewed version, this this satirical I extrapolated version of of reality. But I think it's like better for it. Like I normally don't like this level of weirdness, but I really think this movie does the way that it's crafted. It, I think it works really well. Yeah, for sure. Because if she's feeling like I'm beautiful. I'm loved. I'm valued because everyone's clapping. Wow, this is great. You did such a great job on the show. And then she hears all that in the bathroom. Yeah. So now she's hearing you're not valued. You're 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 totally just should be thrown in the trash. You're done. You're 50. You're done. And then she sees this man who gives her just a little bit of love. And she's hearing, no, 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 no. You are beautiful. You are the most beautiful woman, you know, you that this man has ever encountered. You know, so yeah, I am valuable. I am valuable. But how valuable, I didn't think of this before. I didn't realize why that muddy paper bothered me so much. How valuable if this man is not willing just to write the number on another piece of fresh paper that he had, by the way, he went to the doctor, so he had like all his paperwork, but he hands you a piece of muddy paper. I wouldn't even do that to you. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it was gross. Yeah. How special does he think I am that he thinks? Let's hand her this muddy, wet, soggy piece of paper with my phone number on it. Yeah, I should put this in my pocket. Gross. But she does put it in her pocket. She does. She does. Because she's feeling she needs that reassurance. And I'm not saying anything bad about that. We all do. But yeah. Yeah. Um. So then she goes home and she watches the substance a USB stick and it out outlines a very simple process. Barely anything, but we'll get into it. <laughs> but yeah. But you uh you become a second person, you want the better version of yourself, and boom, you got it. All you have to do is switch places every seven days, no exceptions. I think I leaned over to Tawny and I said, I need a lot more convincing. <laughs> like that was not enough of an advertisement for me to feel first of all i knew what was gonna happen uh to invest yeah. i'm just I'm, I'm just not sure 
<laughs> and I liked she did just dump it right then in the trash. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not really I don't remember exactly what happens next to prompt her right to go and dig this the substance you USB or information out of the trash so that she can call them. But something that was really God, I just admire Demi Moore and Margaret Folly so much because they put their bodies on inspection by all of us as well. There's a lot of them being naked and it's not gratuitous. I it's totally a part of the movie and the message. And so you see Demi Moore in lots of scenes, but what I'm remembering most, and I think that's close to what we're talking about is she's out of the shower and she's standing there. Right. And you see her body, you see her behind, you know, her buttocks, her buttocks, <laughs> right. Her body. And she's looking at herself and inspecting, inspecting herself. And this is something I noticed through the, I, I feel like through the progression of the movie, I was with her on noticing more things about herself. So when you first see her, um, you're like, wow, she's great. And she's gorgeous. And let me just put this out there. I think she's gorgeous through everything. Well, okay. <laughs> Monstrous. <laughs> Eliza. Eliza Sue. <laughs> no, but the real Demi Moore, right? That we're watching who is undressed and stuff. She's absolutely gorgeous. But they point out more. Like if it's wrinkle on her face or the way and in you don't notice it because she's beautiful, but then they really zero in on it as she is zeroing it or zeroing in on it. You know, like she has a beautiful body, but when they keep zeroing it or zeroing in on these asses of you know, like Margaret and her team, like these perfect, perfect booties. This is what it is, this is what it is. And then you see to me who is standing there naked and she's a 50 year old woman, normally you'd be like, oh, this is gorgeous. But there you start to see a warped vision as she's seeing a warped vision. You know what I mean? It's an incredible journey to go on with her and incredibly painful. And wow, to Demi and to Margaret, but just we're talking about Demi right now because that's where we're at, to put herself out there so vulnerably, right? Yeah. And is living that with her was so sad and so hard, especially because as women, we tend to look at ourselves and pick everything apart, right? Yeah. When we look at her, we're like, God, you're gorgeous. Why are you so sad? I wish I looked like you at 50. And I think, um, you know, you made a comment to me, I think on the way home about like, uh, we're so up in it. We're so like in her face were so close up and that's true like in this sh in this movie there's so many macro shots i mean we're like we are so extreme close up we're, we're looking at things so small you know what i mean and that's like i think that's kind of by design i think the fact that we spend so much time so close up on bodies and faces specifically of sue and elizabeth is because that's kind of what it's like. It's totally what it's like. You're like you're constantly in the mirror. I mean, like looking so like close at your face that no one would even ever notice. Like we all have these things that we notice and that we're self-conscious of. I was thinking about this after we had talked about it. Like, you know, me, like I have like a couple of moles on my face and I have like hairs that grow out of those moles. And I am I don't I'm not self-conscious about the moles themselves, you know, but I'm but I'm conscious of like hair growing out of them. So I pay a lot of attention and I end up like touching them a lot and I end up like, you know, plucking the hairs. And I feel like that's, you know, again, after our conversation, when we were talking about our own experience and sort of relating it to that, I was like, that's totally that for me. Like no one probably even sees it notices cares at all but it's something that is so microscopic on my face that like i pay attention to and so i i feel like that was really intentional just being so fucking up in it and you're spending so much time like picking apart and looking so close and i have a few uh things about this as well from uh like quotes and stuff while you look that up, I just wanted to say one of the things I see all the time in the beauty industry or for beauty products is like, 
oh, I can't even see my pores. We all have pores, <laughs> but I have put skincare on where I looked in the mirror and went, ooh, you can see my pores more. <laughs> Toss it in the trash. <laughs> this one, you don't see my pores as much. Pores, guys. <laughs> like it's a little, little tiny things your skin, all over the surface of your skin. You like need to have them. They need to open and they need to close. <laughs> We're like so concerned, like, don't look at the fact that I have pores, you know, like it's it's absurd when you like pull it out and look at it, you know, like yes. that. But it's so I, I mean, it's so real. It's so close to reality. You know, I do the same thing. I'm also like, I don't like to look like glisteny, you know, like I feel like that's now like a new uh, beauty trend. But like I, I grew up in the matte era. You yeah. got to look fucking airbrushed, totally dry but not flaky, absolutely just matte. And I'm like, I feel self-conscious when I look like that, but. I had a little redness here, so I need to make sure we put the concealer, but then I add the perfect redness with my blush. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so I have a few quotes from Demi Moore, which I felt like were Ooh, good. really perfect. appropriate. And I'll post all of these links. I, I just, I pulled these from a, a handful of different articles so i'm not going to cite them i will just post them in our discord but um demi said what really struck me was the harsh violence against oneself it's not what's being done to you it's what we do to ourselves so that's one quote in one yes. article yeah and then this is Similar, but in a different article, it says, speaking to the film subject matter more who has faced her fair share of sexism and ageism said she felt a connection to the film because of her personal experience of doing harm to her body through disordered eating and over-exercising. What I did to myself, what I made it mean about me, really looking at that violence, how violent we can be towards ourselves, how just brutal. The last uh, quote that I have from Demi is a little bit more about uh, relating this to men as well. And I definitely think this movie is obviously like so much about the the female experience but i don't think that that uh leaves men out either right because men also obsess over their looks and sort of nitpick like this i definitely don't think they're held to the same beauty standards and the same level of course but it does exist and so there i have this last quote from Demi that i think is uh very true and appropriate so it doesn't start with a quote it says the uh Though the satirical drama unpacks its messaging through its central women characters, Moore said its themes are relatable to men. self -jud So this is where the quote starts. Self-judgment, chasing perfection, trying to rid ourselves of flaws, also feeling rejected and despair. None of this is exclusive to women. We've all had moments where you go back and you're trying to fix something and you're just making it worse to the point where you're incapacitated. We're seeing these small things nobody else is looking at, but we're so hyper-focused on all that we're not. All of us, if we start to think our value is only with how we look, then ultimately we're going to be crushed. After seeing this movie, I've been hyper-aware of how many times I am conscious of how I look throughout the day. And it's an, it's an obscene amount of times. I was thinking about that too. Even just in preparation for this recording, you know, like we're, we're ready. We spent like a good time getting set up, right? Because it's just a different beast recording in person. We had to get lighting, right? We had to get whatever. And then like last things last, I'm like, uh, I need a red lip though. Because uh, I got to look like I have lips. I'm like, can, you <laughs> can I borrow some lipstick, you know? And we're in there like doing our makeup. I'm like, this is that. This right? is that, yeah. Like this is we're doing it. We're doing it right now. Is this beauty state like we're like over picking and obsessing just about how we look? Oh, OK. Where are we? We're deep in life. I know. But yeah, she um, calls him. They give her a drop box in a shady part of town. She walks there, gets in there. You're like, no, I would not. I would never. <gasps> I did lean over to you, right? Like, because she goes to this building and the door doesn't even open all the way. She has to crawl through garbage to go into this room. Um, and I was like, ah, uh, no. But doesn't that say to the lengths that will go to 
to preserve that youth, which was society finds the most valuable. Yeah. She wasn't going to stop then. You know, she no, she I went mean, all that way. I mean, would I? I mean, I'm all that way. And there is the door thing that shows that that. But then I'd be like, what kind of business is this? That, <laughs> that they can't even have a working door. And yeah. But I think um, I think it obviously like your everyday person wouldn't do it. But we're talking about a character whose entire livelihood is based on her looks. So I feel like I can get behind doing this, right? Like a- an everyday person, you wouldn't. But this is her life. This is her livelihood. And her age is significantly impacting her ability to even continue to make money. So she's like, OK, I guess I will. <laughs> but it's definitely like a scary horror movie setup. Yeah. I also feel like there's this piece of her trudging through this really shitty part of neighborhood. It's really run down. She's crawling through leaves and garbage to go under this door to and then the hallway is like from straight from a it's just abandoned and wrecked and disgusting and she's trudging through this and then the door open to where her locker is that has the package of the substance is like pristine crystal clear bright light I, this made me think of like hope Like, this is how she's feeling, like dirty and filthy and unworthy as she's climbing through. And then you're in this room that has the answer. And this is the great hope, this clean, perfect, pristine version of me. And then she goes, I love that, though, because you're in that dirty hallway. And then it and she's you're seeing her standing in a hallway at the end of this really dirty hallway. And then you see from her perspective and the room is like fucking crazy different. Yeah. Blindingly white, yes. just totally clean. Yeah. Pure white purity. Yeah. Yeah. White. Oh yes. This is so good. I didn't even think about it that way. Cause it is sort of also, I mean like totally good thoughts on, on purity and her lens. Again, we're back in her lens. Like I had to trudge through this disgusting life of how gross, how gross I am. I need to, uh, you know, step into my my best self, which is this pristine, flawless, totally um, blemish free version. Right. Um, But also, I think there's something there about the dichotomy of like it's black and white. It's either disgusting or it's pristine. Like there's no in between. There's no gray area. And it's this or it's that. And again, we're getting that through her lens. It's not necessarily the reality, but I didn't think about all of this stuff, all of this in between. Uh, you know, I was only thinking about that, like when people are talking to her. But I think you're right that it applies here, too. That's so interesting. You know what else I was thinking with this is. They only. They only have to go back and get the refill kits when they are their old selves. And it made me wonder if that's not why they put it in a rundown part of town. Because if you had someone who looked like a supermodel walking around in like a like like, you know, run run down alleyway like that would be that would raise suspicion. But if you have this like old person walking through there, then it doesn't and no one pays attention to them because they just you're just blind to like older or like value you know i'm doing air quotations here valueless people and I, there was something to that i think too that they don't ever have to go back to get the like refills when they're the young version the the other self is what it's called that is fucking incredible i <laughs> i didn't even think of that you're right. That's just reinforcing as you age, you're less valuable. Yeah. No one pays attention. To yeah. Gosh. Think mm. of that. Yeah. Okay. So then she takes it home and she's yeah. got the kit. And I know you want to talk about this. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Sorry if we're moving too fast, if you wanted to. No, have- this is exactly what I want to talk about. Sorry. I interrupted you. The first thing was, okay, so the kit was really cool and it had like some instructions, but there was just, I feel like not enough instructions. So this was the one thing, like maybe they didn't show us all the instructions. So it wasn't something that ruined it for me because I assumed maybe there were more instructions. They just didn't highlight in the, the shots 
because there are it's very clear it's like you know this is um you know the transition and you probably have the exact verbiage and this is like the sustenance or the food for the other self for your for you for yourself this was like the um the how you switch every seven days right and a lot of it was injections so if you don't like needles there's tons of needles in all shapes and sizes so beware i immediately thought i would have no clue what to do like i would look at this and think i mean i know maybe i would google well first of all i don't think that was a thing in the 80s though so but even taking it out because honestly i didn't feel like per what you were saying that this was the 80s it's totally timeless and so I thought to myself, maybe I would Google the different needles because they were all different sizes and thicknesses of needles and what those needles were for. We definitely don't see any of that. We just see she's like opening the shit and like doing a fucking intravenous into her vein. OK, just that. I was like, how does she get it into her, her vein? And Tani and I had a long conversation about this because I was like, I don't even know how I would do that. But then on the other hand, there are people who are addicted to drugs and do figure out how to do that. And they aren't trained on how to do that. So I guess it's possible. But that's fucking intense. I am so stressed when I have to go get blood taken, like to try to find a vein. And even those professionals don't always find a vein. And it's very incredibly stressful. And so I didn't know how because it 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 seems as though she's looking at the stuff, trying to figure it out and she figures it out. And I'm like, I don't know how she figures it out. So what it entails, and then I'm going to be quiet so Tawny can speak, was she has to inject intravenously, that's the right word, right? The substance. And then, oh, wait, maybe I'll stop. I won't say the whole process because it gets crazy. Or should I? Should I say that? Okay. So she injects that and she's like, oh, I don't know if I feel anything. And then she's like wrenching in pain all over the bathroom. I did not expect this. Okay. I thought the oh fuck. Okay, guys, this movie. I thought the DN, I thought the shot would somehow affect her physical appearance. It would alter her DNA so that her physical appearance changes. No, friends. No. Her back rips open and she gives birth to a new 20 year old human out of her back okay so now you're this 20 year old human that's like disoriented and looking around and you're like holy shit okay wow i'm sexy as fuck and then you see this other shit and know oh there's the body that's still alive of I guess I came out of that person. I need to now sew their back <laughs> and give them food. Like they're figuring this shit out. I I think I told Tawny I would have just died. I probably would have stuck the thing in me in the wrong way and died right there. Nothing else would have happened. Yeah, yeah, totally. This is like I I do feel like this is the biggest uh, suspension of disbelief that you have to do with this movie because. It's not really explained. It's so uh, simple in the instructions and seemingly they know exactly what to do. So at any moment, there's no question. There's just like, oh, I guess I do this now. This is food and I put it intravenously or that like there's other injections that happen in the spine or that you can like do in your like thigh. And so either, you know, that happens off screen or we just as a movie have decided we don't need to feed you force feed you that information. You just go along this ride and have to suspend that disbelief. And I think that is hard. Cause I, I had the same reaction watching it the first time I was like, I have so many questions <laughs> as a person who likes to follow instructions and know what the expectations are of me and meet those expectations. I need so much more instruction. Like you can't just literally the instructions are like you use the activator once you use the stabilizer every seven days, once a day, 
and then you switch every seven days, no exceptions. That's it. That's all they give you. But I think it's a brilliant storytelling strategy because it's super easy to cling on to. And you don't know what the ramifications are yet. You don't know why or how or anything. That's all you're fed is like, this is it. And so it sets you up for this like, but what happens if not? What if you don't do this and we go there? eventually yes like i even think i suppose so there's this nugget of understanding that helps it not to be so ridiculously unbelievable so for example i made that whole thing in my head of looking up what the different needle types are and that will tell you what to do i guess you could i mean you know you need we've all gotten blood taken you need to tie the thing like if I saw a plastic like long thing, I don't know what they're called. I would know from seeing all the movies and from just getting blunt drawn that that needs to go around my bicep so that my vein bulges. So maybe intuitively I would know, OK, this probably needs to go intravenously. Now, could I do it? I and people do it all the time, so I don't think I could, but people could. Then after that, you're like, foo, 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 fucking foo. <laughs> that was a ride. And then you give birth to that human. Now this new human is here. I guess if you see a needle with very thick thread and a long slice along this other body's back, you would, uh, I can help come to the conclusion you need to close up that wound for sure. So there's a nugget of understanding there that I think makes it believable. But what I want to say about this, because I've been dying to talk about this wound, this is, okay, body horror excellence. It is so painful and gross, and you get her stitching up the entire spine, this needle in the flesh. Wow, the, the, um, the effects of this, like, the fit, like, this looks like real flesh, and she's stitching up. Wow. I mean, and we get such a close up shot of it going through the skin. I mean, like it is so. Yeah. Oh, and the sound, of course. Yeah. It's so close. Like we keep saying, you know, you're in it. You're so close to it that it is so gross. And it's yeah, you're like you flinch the whole time. You're like, oh, God. Yeah. Ugh. And then you're thinking, well, what do you, you can't invite anyone to your house. <laughs> they cover that later. <laughs> but I'm like. Now there's this body in your house. And at, at first, I didn't know she was still alive. Yeah, I thought she was dead. Yeah, yeah, I thought she was dead, too. Um, and I'm like, oh, fuck, what do you do now? I'm like, how do you get back? Yeah. And then she sees the seven-day ration of food and knows to pop the... Um, and I, again, there's a portion of that belief. We've all seen if whether we experienced it ourselves in the hospital or seen movies, you know, to give food. I would have never thought to give food intravenously though. I always thought it was like down the throat or in the stomach, but I know you give hydration through the vein, but yeah. And Tony, you had mentioned like the air bubble and stuff. There's like so much that can go wrong with this. I would have killed everybody. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And again, I think this is why this is the, the part of the movie that you have to suspend your disbelief the most. Cause that was exactly, I, I told you, I was like, I know for a fact that if you get a air bubble in the uh, in your heart, you die like you. So you have to. That's why on movies and stuff, you'll see them flick the shot and 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 squirt it out so that there's no air bubbles before they go to inject something. But then you get some of those air bubbles in the tube for the feeding. And I, and I but I don't think that this that's what this movie is about. Right. Like this movie is not about it's not about like uh, being scientifically accurate. You know what I mean? Like it's so out there. It's we're, we're dealing with this wild aspect. But uh, yeah, I again, I think it's kind of better for it. You're like, you have to just be like, yep, that's the world I guess we're living in. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I guess I accept this. Yeah, but this is a this is a wild scene because it is so. Uh, it's just so visceral and gross. And also, uh, what's the word? Like, you're so in it, you know, even the sound design, it sounds like you're underwater because we're getting oh. we're getting the point of view from Sue, 
who's our new character. We don't get her name until later, but she's been birthed and she like picks herself up off the floor and it's like she's underwater and she's got to go look at herself in the mirror and she doesn't know what's going on. And it's I don't know. It's just it does such a good job. I felt like this is another nod. Maybe not. Maybe I'm maybe I'm reaching here, but there's this movie Enter the Void and I, I'm sure I've mentioned it at some point, but I fucking hate that movie. It's obs- it's it's terrible. It's I hate it. It's like one of my most like angry watches when I finally finish it. It's so long. It's like three hours. It is just a never ending movie. But the one thing that I liked about that movie is in the first like 30 minutes, it has the best POV thing I've ever seen. And it's this like point of view of this guy going into a bathroom and I I can't he's either on drugs or he's dying. I don't remember. But you see him go in and like look at himself and he's in this bathroom and it's just this like really trippy experience. And I think he gets maybe shot or something and dies. And it's his point of view of dying. So he like like so then you're you're seeing it through his eyes, but then you see it like he's coming out of his body and he's floating above the city and he like goes he starts the journey of like visiting people that he knows and it was like so I remember it being so impactful and so cool. And so I felt like that was I don't know if it was a nod, but I felt like it took the best part of that movie and reincorporated it into this, which was awesome. Yeah, because when she was transitioning, so when she took the substance and was going through, there was I love that. I felt like I was going on the journey with her. There was just like all these lies. I can't even explain it. You guys are going to have to go watch it. But it was intense. And you felt like you were going through it with her. And then <gasps> you are Sue. And you're right. There's this, like, if you were to close your ears and you can hear her breathing. Yeah. It's, oh, it's so. Yeah. And she's checking herself out and like this new, this new version. So there is that link between them both. Because if you were a completely new person, you may like, might be like, what the fuck is happening right there is an acknowledgement of what's happening yes like i knowingly did this to myself and i know i know where i'm at i know this bathroom because it's my bathroom right kind of a thing um and one thing one other note i wanted to make that i i think is really cool is like obviously this movie has some cronenberg vibes as a body horror film but one of the things that i liked the most is uh this transition when they split you know there's this uh visualization of it which is just like moving through lights you know it's just like but you also have this uh, auditory element where it's like fragmented and just like snippets like just repeating snippets and this happens for a long time and then that's you know when they split and this reminded me a lot of possessor and i like for sure i think even movies before this um, that David Cronenberg had done. I'm sure has done this before his son, Brandon Cronenberg, but like Possessor definitely did this, you know, where there was this like, I remember that. yeah, it's like this representation. It's not even like uh, literally what's going on, but you you get this vibe and it's like the melting face and that kind of stuff. And so I was like, definitely, again, this is one of those moments where you have that like, this is in that this director's like DNA and it just it came through this. It was so cool. I love that. 